Production of specialty crops like fruits and vegetables is quite a labor-intensive process, according to Dr. Philip Martin of the University of California at Davis. Labor represents about 20 to 40 percent of the total production cost. Mr. Frank Gasparini of the Agricultural Safety and Health Council of America estimates that California needs about 470,000 specialty crop workers. However, in recent years, California farms are facing a substantial shortage of workers, and experts predict that this problem may get worse in future years. Some measures in dealing with this labor shortage issue include reducing acreage, switching to less labor-intensive crops, downsizing operations, or moving production to other states. However, many growers are resorting to high-technology innovations that are aimed at reducing labor needs and costs. In this video, we share some experiences from one of the most productive vegetable growing regions of the world, the Salinas Valley of California. My name is Richard Smith. I'm the Vegetable Crops Farm Advisor here in Monterey County, California. We are very dependent on uh, farm labor here. Uh, there's a lot of farm labor that's uh, used for harvesting the crops, uh, producing the crops, irrigating the crops, and so forth. We've been able to mechanize certain aspects of crop production, but in general, um, there's still uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, hand labor involved. To produce the crop, uh, it's about, um, let's call it $4,000. The, uh, the labor for uh, weeding and, and thinning and so forth um, is about uh, $150. And, uh, but then the, tr uh, the irrigation is probably another $150 to $200 in terms of labor. And, um, and then tractor driving, lots of, lots of tractor driving. And then uh, that's kind of most of it. You know, we're looking at uh, inputs other than labor, you know, that, that, that are very expensive, such as the seed and the irrigation, land rent, overhead. All of those things are very, uh, very expensive. Uh, and so the labor cost isn't necessarily, um, you know, the, the driver, it's the availability, you know. And that's, I think that's, that's a, a big issue. You know, it's like, you can have all this great seed, but somebody's gonna have to get out here and plant it and take, excellent care of these crops. So, This field is uh, being transplanted by, with a new technology called plant tape, which was uh, developed in Europe and uh, bought by uh, a company here in the Salinas Valley called Tanamir and Anil. And uh, it uses a new t uh, technology for transplanting where the, the plants are grown in a, um, um, using a mechanism where all the plants are connected uh, by a tape and then uh, the machine can feed them down and transplant them uh, very quickly and uh, and it's so uh, the efficiency of transplanting is is quite dramatic uh, over traditional transplanting this is how the plants come and so they are they're all connected in a big long tape and then the machine as they come down uh, and puts them in the ground then they cut them and then uh, if you can look how young this plant is, this is uh, quite substantially younger than traditional transplanting. And then they, they tend not to have as much uh, transplant shock. They just take off and grow uh, much quicker. So this is our product called the plant tape. Each plant is grown in an individual cell in a tray of 810 plants. It so has quite a few more plants than your normal conventional tray. Those are usually 338s or 210s. This one has 810. Now, the purpose of plant tape is really to save on labor. Trans, um, conventionally transplanted crops usually have about 17 people out here per crew. You've got a tractor driver, about eight people sitting on the planter and then another four to six people following the planter and filling in blanks or making sure each plant is planted perfectly. With plant tape, the machine does all that for you. You need three people, one tractor driver and two crew, two crew members on top, moving trays through the machine. So the job of the crew up top is they're moving trays 
and stringing the plant tape down these troughs and into the back of the module. So it's a continuous string of plants, but it's cut individually. There's a knife block at the bottom of the module that's cutting each plant into whatever plant to plant spacing that you need. The computer on the side here is what's determining your plant to plant spacing. So our first machine was all chain driven. There was a chain connected to this gauge wheel up into a gearbox. So every time you wanted to change your plant to plant spacing, it was like changing gears on a bicycle. Now we have a computer instead of a gearbox. So with gear drive or chain drive systems, if you have a day like today where it's a little wet and you are getting stuck in the mud and it's, you have a lot of torque on your drive shaft, you weren't getting a really correct ground speed um, to plant to plant ratio. Here, there's no torque on the, uh, on the gauge wheel. You can input any type, any spacing that you want. So if you want 10.25 inches plant to plant, that's what you'll get. Previously with the, the gears, you were limited to you know, 10 inches or 10 and a half inches, or you would have to fab up an, a custom sprocket to get your 10 and a quarter. So we run uh, usually around five miles an hour, which is a lot faster than a conventional crew. You can go, Christian about five miles an hour. And that's gonna give us about two acres per hour with three people compared to conventionally 17 people and one acre an hour. While there is automation for transplanting, many major operations and especially crop production require human labor. The primary thing that happens is um, weeding, thinning, and then of course harvest. But um, probably what people don't realize is uh, the irrigation is, uh, is, a, is an area where there's actually quite a bit of labor that goes into it. And what the growers are trying to do now, one of their big focuses is to cut, be more efficient with uh, weeding and thinning. And we have actually machinery, automated weeders and automated uh, uh, thinners that can help with that. And growers are trying to get more efficient with their uh, drip irrigation. And you can see in this field over there, uh, they're putting in, um, laying the drip tape. And uh, ideally, they would irrigate this crop without moving in any pipe, which that's a lot of hand labor to move pipe in. And if they can set these plants with that drip tape, uh, that's an area where they're, they can be more efficient. Growers are continuing to address the issues of labor shortages and increasing labor expenses by using automation. There is automated weeding, thinning, and even some harvesting. Automated weeding is now becoming more uh, established, and there's two companies uh, that provide the weeders out of um, the Netherlands and out of Denmark, uh, the Stika T machine and the Robovader. And those have been um, embraced by some growers, but they're very expensive machines, and they're limited in, in terms of what they can do, but, um, but they can be helpful. To, they don't eliminate the need for hand weeding. They just make subsequent hand weeding more efficient. And uh, I think the big challenge is in the area of irrigation. Uh, moving pipe uh, in fields, we mostly sprinkler irrigate here, is very uh, labor intensive. And uh, the labor um, hours are, are long. You know, the, the irrigators are out there for uh, many hours during, the, especially when the summer and things have to be watered in a timely fashion. So uh, those kinds of um, activities are, are really challenging for growers to find people uh, to uh, do the irrigation. So uh, growers are looking at ways to try and um, uh, economize on irrigation labor too by going to automated uh, drip like we're seeing in this field but then also uh, putting in solid set sprinklers that don't need to be moved as much. Um, and so technologies like that are, are really the main things that we see in the field. You know, um, there's some growers that have even stated to me that they don't know how they would even be able to continue farming without some of these technologies. And really, they, they're very new, really, since 2012 and 2013 is when the first thinners came in. 
And so growers have uh, embraced that kind of technology. They're also um, working with the H2A program. So some growers have actually um, you know, bought some housing to provide for workers you know, to try and have a, a reliable uh, source of labor. And that, that's an added expense because uh, you have to purchase, of course, the housing, uh, provide uh, transportation and food. And uh, this company here has actually put in a, an 800 uh, unit housing, uh, just not far from here, uh, to address some of that need. Lettuce thinning is also an important practice in vegetable production that has become automated in recent years. We don't have um, kind of reliable enough germination of the, the seeds. Um, so, so to compensate for that, the growers plant more seeds than is necessary, like you know three to five times more seed than is necessary, and then they uh, thin those plants, those excess plants out to get the stand that they want. My name is Jason Mello. I work with Agmectronics, which is a automated ag solutions based engineering company based out of New Mexico, uh, Silver City, New Mexico in the United States. And we are in Salinas, California in the Salinas Valley here on uh, Monterey Bay Farms Reeves Ranch. The machine that you see behind me is an automated thinning machine developed by Agmectronics. And what it's doing is it's thinning out the lettuce seed line so that the lettuce can grow in an appropriate manner. Uh, in the past, it used to be people would come out and thin with hose, long-handled hose, or way back when, short-handled hose. Now we've developed a machine that actually takes the place of approximately 130 people to do the same process, however, more faster and more economical. This particular machine works by using a vision technology. It's called a forward vision technology using IR, uh, infrared lens and uh, reading capability. And what it's doing is it has an algorithm in the software that the camera is telling that algorithm what it sees. And there is the programmer who is the operator, the tractor driver or the uh, manager, pre-programs -pre -pre what spacing he desires and as a result, the camera is always looking for that spacing and it tells it there is two and a half inch speed seat spacing on average in this field. We need to thin approximately every two to three plants to achieve your 10 or 11 or 12 inch spacing that you want. Once that is pre-programmed the camera, the way our machine works is there's no CPU for it. Each camera is its own individual computer. And therefore, the camera just goes through sees what it sees, and then tells a solenoid when to spray a material on the plant it wants to kill and spray nothing on a plant that it wants to keep or spray a beneficial spray on the plant that it keeps at the same time. So essentially it's forward-looking information, forward-looking camera vision that tells the sprayer when to spray based on an algorithm in a computer and software. So this is the machine. It's a standard toolbar, like an ag toolbar that you'd find anywhere on a cultivator or disc. And what's different is what's attached to the toolbar. What you have here is a, it's called a unit, and this is blue, this blue piece right here that attaches to the diamond bar of the implement. And the front part of this is the camera, and this is the optics. It's not only the optics, it's also the individual computer. And this rear canopy right here in casing is the spray solenoids. And this, this particular machine has three solenoids per because they want to do a lot of weed abatement. And so what we have designed for them is not only will it kill the plants that they don't want, but it'll lay a, 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 a kind of a protective stripe along the outside of the plants they want to keep to help for weed abatement. The camera, there's a computer on board inside the, uh, the cab that the operator uses. Inside that computer, the operator pre-programs what kind of spacing they want. Once that's programmed, the operator runs into the field and, lets the, and drives the machine for 50 feet without activating sprayers, just so the cameras can see what the average spacing is for each seed line. Well, after he gets done with the 50 feet, he'll come back in reverse, set the implement down, turn on the pumps, and go. 
the information's already been loaded into each individual camera about what it's supposed to do, what it's looking for, and what kind of spacing it, it's supposed to have. And after that, with our particular machine, I could take that monitor out of the cab and he can just keep going without it the rest of the day because everything's already loaded into the cameras. Uh, generally, a lot of people would argue that the machines take a lot of jobs away from what people would be normally doing. However, in the state of California and in many places that are agricultural based in the United States, there is an extreme shortage for uh, available, reliable, and willing labor. Not to mention, especially here in California, the cost for that labor increases exponentially every year, you know, to the point where a grower just can't, isn't able to provide the uh, product to the consumer at a, you know, a price that a consumer is willing to pay without having to use some sort of technology to supplement the labor shortage. Another new technology that's entered the specialty crop vegetable production system in California is the electric tractor. Hello, my name is Michael Charters and I'm with Selectrac. I'm the chief operating officer and we've developed this tractor that we're going to, to the commercialization phase of production. It's an all electric. We've got electric actuators which do away with the hydraulics and we have the electric motor that does away with the fossil fuel engine. We know that engines typically on tractors have about 300 moving parts whereas this tractor only has one moving part and it requires no fossil fuels. So with that we have no emissions, we have no pollutions, and we have potentially no spillage. There's no serviceable or annual maintenance on this tractor at all and potentially this battery here, given the load and the workload, has about 3,000 cycle lives. So the tractor can operate anywhere between four to six hours on the onboard battery pack and then in three different locations we can add an exchangeable battery pack that give extended or continuous usage. The moving parts with the tractor uh, is there's an electric motor that attaches to the transmission that attaches to the PTO. The PTO typically is attached directly into the transmission and then you'll engage it. So we have an electric motor that's directly coupled into that transmission and the motor as you know has one moving part and it spins. But if you look at a diesel engine potentially you have about 300 moving parts. You've got the, the oil pumps, you've got the fan belts, you've got all the gear mechanisms and we've done away with all of that. So you've, you've, you've so, reduced your service that's required on the tractor to none. You don't have any costs that are associated during the year to the tractor at all. So it, it helps reduce that initial cost. My name is Stephen Heckeroth. I've been working on electric tractors for 25 years. Uh, we've recently received two grants to take them into production. Electric tractors have to be a lot more efficient than diesel because there's so much energy stored in diesel and we only have a battery pack to do the same thing. So we're using linear actuators that have no toxic fluids. They're 20 times more efficient than hydraulics. We're using an electric motor that has one moving part compared with 300 moving parts for diesel with all the maintenance that goes along with that and all the oil leaks on the crops and we're using um, linear actuators for three different hitches and we have exchangeable battery packs so that solves the range problem. You can put a battery pack on any of these three hitches and have an implement or a loader on the other hitches and we've got this forward visibility that hasn't been available since the Alice Chalmers G in 1948 so you can see actually what you're cultivating. The major constraint, of course, is money. You know, the, these machines are uh, expensive, and um, so being able to capitalize. And so, you know, what that means is larger operations are more able to do this. The other thing is growers are also very skeptical about the machines and how well they work, so they, they want to see it. So. Um, so there are some options, you know, other than buying the machines. Um, some companies, like Pacific Ag Rentals, uh, they actually offer a, a service where they'll come in and do thinning for you. Or you can rent the machine by month. Uh, I know some growers that are doing that and then they're testing the machine. Uh, this is, speaking of the automated weeder, the RoboVader, 
so then they don't have to just go and, and buy the machine because it's about $250,000 or more, depending on how big of a machine that you get. And, and here in this valley, they want to do things 380 inch beds at a time. So that's a big machine. So the machine like that uh, is going to be even more expensive, over $300,000. So it's, it's, it's very expensive. This situation here where they're planting, um, well, the grower just told us they're planting 25 acres with, with six people. And uh, to do that with a conventional uh, transplanter would take at least probably 50, a crew of 15. So they're saving quite a bit. And I'm not sure, I think it would take more than a day for them to do it, you know, because I think they do about 20 acres a day at the most. I think we're, growers are adapting to the current situation, which is we don't have as much labor as we used to. And um, so they're embracing this new technology that helps them get the thinning done, helps them with the weeding, in this case, uh, helps them with transplanting. Uh, and that's, that's helping them currently. Now, if you were to look down the road 20 years from now, are we, are we gonna just have machines doing what the crews used to do? It's possible, but uh, that's dependent on the development of the technology, you know. But we see a lot of interest in that. You know, there's a lot of um, effort. We, we talk about the Silicon Valley has come to the Salinas Valley. And, um, and if, you, if you go on YouTube and look at uh, automated weeding, uh, you'll get probably 10 companies that come up, brand new companies. There's a lot of um, young people uh, who are very sharp and who are working on developing algorithms and technologies and uh, process, you know, um, programming computers to help them uh, do some of this work. It's kind of like it's always been. You know, we have to know the agronomy. We have to know, um, you know, the soils and the how irrigation works and water percolates through the soils and the nutrients and all that. That basic information is um, still vitally important, is critical. Um, however, but now we put the emphasis on efficiency. So, um, you know, there's going to be more fine tuning of that kind of uh, activity, especially nutrient management and irrigation management. You know, we're going to be way more efficient with that. Um, but then there's this added aspect of it with uh, technology, you know. So understanding the computers and understanding how this kind of um, technology works and the thing that's interesting, you already see it, where the older growers really rely on the younger people because the, the younger people aren't afraid because they, they've grown up with computers and so they're very comfortable with uh, when a machine breaks, uh, you know, knowing how to fix the computer aspect of it. Uh, they're not afraid of that. And, um, Whereas the older growers are, are more um, resistant to that, you know, or maybe don't embrace it. So I think the younger people, you know, getting as much technology uh, training as, as they can is, is a good thing. Using technology in agriculture is the way of the future. By using leading edge tech, growers in the Salinas Valley of California will be able to keep labor needs and costs down, simplify production, and continue to produce high quality and affordable specialty crops.